This afternoon, um, we have a special congressional fireside chat with two extremely strong Indian country champions from the House of Representatives. We have with us Representative uh, John, Don Young, and of course, our fuse representative, Gwen Moore. We're so excited to have them with us this afternoon. Uh, Congressman uh, Don Young is serving his 25th term as Alaska's native, as Alaska's only member of the United States House of Representatives. And he is currently the most senior Republican on both the House Transportation and Infrastructure Committee and House Natural Resources Committee. Also with us is Congresswoman Gwen Moore from our state of Wisconsin, who was elected as our representative in the fourth district in 2004 and became the first African-American representative elected to Congress from the state of Wisconsin. She is a member of the House Ways and Means Committee and an active member of the Congressional Progressive Caucus. Thank you so much for both of you being here with us and sharing some space with us this afternoon. We're so happy to have you. It's so good to see you both. And we know that you understand Indian country like no other. And so we're going to kick off the chat this afternoon and sort of put another log on the fire and sort of just start out by inviting you both to provide some comments and some, some perhaps evolving into the idea and share some thoughts about how you support legislation from Indian country including Nahasda to tax policy to VAWA and any else, anything else that you feel deemed appropriate. So we'll start with you, uh, Representative Young. Thank you very much for asking me to join this chat session. And Gwen, thanks for being with us. Um, you know, I've been involved in the indigenous people, my Alaska Native for about 66 years. I married a lovely lady, have uh, 14 uh, Aboriginal people. Uh, my grandkids, and I'm quite proud of that. So I've been working a long time. If you check the record, uh, when I was chairman, we passed a lot of uh, we call the American Indian legislation. Uh, I'll continue to do that. I work on it very hard. Um, we have different issues, as I love the presentation of the advanced appropriations. I have been pushing this for years and years and years, and unfortunately not been successful. Man, both parties, this is an interesting thing. It's not just one party. This is a congressional action has to be taken together by bipartisanship. Uh, I'm been, I'm hoping uh, that uh, when you're on appropriations, we got Tom Cole, Ken Calvert, Ben McCollum. I can go down the line. Are all good supporters? If I had any suggestion for the tribes of America, I would suggest you write letters and make phone calls to the congressman or on the committee, and the from your tribes within your districts. So they understand this is very important to do, as was mentioned, the trust responsibility. Uh, I, for years, you know, I were scattered all over. You take Wisconsin. I can put 25 Wisconsins in Alaska, Quinn. And I, they're, scattered, they're scattered all over. But it's always been a problem is our health system is they've run it well. They've done good. But you never know. There's no funding. Like I said, I've been through three shutdowns. Never vote for a shutdown. Quinn. Forget it. I don't know who's in charge. Don't vote for a shutdown. It's bad on everyone. But how my health providers can plan ahead of time without knowing the amount of money they'll get. I am very frankly would like to see four years, but I'll, I'll take two years. Right now, we don't have any year. It's by the will of the, of the Appropriations Committee and the Congress itself. As you say, we've been under a continuing resolution. So that's one of the biggest issues that we have. We'll work on it. Now, Haas is another one. Uh, you know, that's been held up in the Senate. We passed it out of the House. We're working to try to get it done again. It's the right thing to do. It works well. We built some great housing and facilities in Alaska. I want to continue that. Um, and as you know, as the infrastructure bill we passed uh, bipartisanly, um, you know, it, it takes care of some of the problems on our reservations and on our native lands in Alaska. We're going to try to continue to work on that. Broadband is another big important. That's in that bill, too. So overall, we've done fairly well this session. It's not the greatest in the world, but we've done fairly well. But we can do a lot more. And if I can just leave one thing in mind, for all my indigenous people, be together. When you divide yourselves, you fight amongst yourselves, and there isn't a, a what I call a targeted position, then they peel off and nothing happens. Mm -hmm. uh, this really happened in the hostage. 
Uh, they wanted me to give up on the Hawaiian natives. And I'm not going to give up on any natives. So right. some, well, they're not natives. Well, they are. And once you give, throw one group under the bus, they'll throw another group under the bus. So be united across the board. And indigenous people of America will get their just dues. Uh, I'm confident of that. I would not be working in this job. It's like, like I said, I'm running my 26th term. That's 50 years, by the way. That's longer than all of you. And I'm, when that's at least 20 years older than you are. Anyway, you know, uh, it, it, it's been exciting. This is an issue that I believe in. And uh, you've got an ally, and I hope we understand that. I've never not helped try to work with United Front from my indigenous people. That's the important. I do not like it when I get one group coming in and the other group coming in. And that hurts because they, they want me to cut the baby in half. I'm not going to do it. So try to work it out ahead of time, close doors, bring me a united position. Thank you very much for having me here today. Uh, I never got a prize like Gohalva did, so I have to remember that one too. God bless you, and I'm open for questions, and Gwen, you're on. Thank you, Congressman Young, and you're exactly right. We have to keep our foot on the gas, and to your point, exactly, although we are sovereigns in our own inherent right, the, the things that you discussed, like advanced appropriations and other things, are uh, unifying endeavors, and we're stronger and united together. So thank you very much. Next, of course, as he, as a representative Young said, our very own beautiful lady in red, Representative Moore. The floor is yours. Thank you so very, very much, and happy Valentine's Day to everyone. I noticed oh, you've got your red on today as well. Um, uh, I dug real hard to find this uh, this outfit. Listen, when people say that that they stand on the shoulders of giants, uh, they talk about people like Don Young. Um, he's uh, in his 25th year and uh, everything that I have accomplished with regard to supporting Native peoples has occurred with him right there by my side, guiding me, leading me. Uh, and I, I don't want him to underestimate the big impact that he's made. I mean, I, uh, you know, we in way back in 2012, I mean, that's like 10 years ago, uh, we introduced uh, the the uh, house version of Nahasda, uh, which remains the base text. And what he has indicated is that part of the problem is that we are not giving, we're, we're not separating native peoples and allowing other people to define who's native and who's not. And that would be Hawaiian natives, Alaskan natives. And uh, I remember we had some people uh, belong to the other party, but Don Young was there fighting back his own colleagues and his own party to keep the bill clean. And I think that's the important of bipartisanship that no matter who, uh, has the majority, you got somebody who's going to make sure that the right thing gets done. Same thing with the Violence Against Women Act. I mean, Don Young has been there. Uh, in, in 2013, uh, I led the, um, the, uh, uh, the bill. And of course, the Violence Against Women Act up until 2013 had been something just people yawned through. It had mostly, uh, Don, and you can uh, attest to this, had been a, 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 you know, a bill that would pass uh, you know, on a bipartisan basis without a, a roll call vote, uh, and uh, it would be done. But in 2013, when we provided the special protections for Native women based on harm reduction because we found that native women you know were raped and assaulted and beaten because tribal authorities did not have authority to arrest non-native people uh, that's when all hell broke loose and uh, we continue to uh, find a resistance uh, to expanding the authority of native uh, authorities to uh, to stop domestic violence. Um, and while we were successful in that 2012 bill, there were huge loopholes that really permitted per perpetrators to continue their illegal acts. And we're, we're working on that. We have never given up. Uh, a version of that is in the Senate. They claim that they're going to be passing it any day. We'll wait and see. Uh, 
Mm -hmm. uh, other bills like the Women, Infants and Children's Program coming up with a kind of a different formulary for food so that it's not so full of carbohydrates and cheese and stuff that helps farmers, but it's more, you know, vegetables, fruits, things that people actually need for healthy lactation and so forth. We are, we are pushing um, uh, the USDA to increase the amount and the variety of food uh, in these packages. Now I'm on the tax committee, which you, you know, and so what has been very vexing to me is the uh, a lack uh, of respect for sovereignty around the issues of taxation, the separation of powers. Um, you know, current law, for example, doesn't allow Native people to determine, the tribal courts to determine which adopted children have special needs. Uh, if their courts were sovereign and respected the way the judiciary is, you know, in the 50 states, they would have that power. We don't see any reason that Native judges can't make the determination about who in their membership has special needs. Um, and to be able to provide the documentation thereof. Um, so if you adopt a Native child um, uh, 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 through a state, um, you can't claim the benefit without documentation uh, and, and, and Native documentation is unacceptable. The kitty tax. You, we know that in the Tax Cut and Jobs Act, there was an effort to go after parents who were hiding their big bucks in their children's trust fund. And we believe that it was an inadvertent on the part of the Republicans who were in charge at that time to create this huge liability for Native kids. So we sort of tweaked it and fixed it a little bit. Uh, but the repeal of the bill did not remove the application of the kitty tax to per capita tribal distribution. So I'm leading a bill right now to change that. Um, we heard earlier when, when, when Don and I first got on, we heard a lot of talk about the Indian Health Services. And again, above and beyond the passionate need to provide enough resources so that you can actually provide services to people, there's another tax issue associated with this. Native students who get scholarships through the Indian Health Services uh, Professions uh, um, uh, 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 the National Health Services Corps, um, those kids can get loan repayments uh, that are tax free. Not so for Native country, for Indian country. Um, the Indian Health Service um, uh, needs to have that sort of parity and equity. Now, recently, the Biden administration has announced that, um, that the, the Health Indian Services will invest $45 million to expand loan repayment and support the Indian Health Services' ability to recruit and retain highly skilled health professionals. Um, Tom Cole is the lead on this bill, and we'll be reintroducing this like right now, right around filing date. Um, again, the new market tax credit is a non-refundable tax credit uh, intended to encourage private capital investment in eligible low-income communities. And of course, despite the, the, the dire need in, 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 in Indian country, stakeholders have raised concerns regarding a very, very small percentage of tribal projects that have received the new market tax credit allocation since the program's inception 22 years ago. Uh, and, um, uh, and federal investment in Indian country can encourage small business uh, development and investment. Uh, and so we need to, to write this and figure out how to have an allocation that is set aside at a minimum for Indian country. Again, tax. I'm on the tax committee, Don. So this is something I find vexing. Don, you're on the appropriations committee, right? You're an appropriator. Yeah. Right. So he's concerned about money, and I am too, but I am concerned about taxes. Um, tax exempt debt. Now, 
Native Americans have to pass this so-called essential services test in order to be able to use tax exempt bonds. So say, for example, I went to a, uh, um, a, 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 a memorial service the other day here in Milwaukee at a Milwaukee County Park. They built a beautiful pavilion, but that's an essential government service. That park is a golf course and a park pavilion, but it's an essential government service. Native Americans have a golf course and a clubhouse, and that, that's not an essential government service. Uh, duh, help me understand. We don't understand that. So we think that the test is discriminatory, to put it mildly, and it prevents tribal governments from having the same financing tools as state and local governments, severely restricting the ability of uh, tribes to engage in economic development projects. Um, the Build Back Better Act, um, you know, we're going to be taking up pieces of it as we haven't abandoned it, maybe as a whole package, but there's a piece of it relating to the issue of tax-exempt bonds that we're going to continue to pursue, that they're treated just like states. Um, nothing more maddening to drive down a beautiful road and have it stop at some gravel road right as you hit Indian country. Um, again, renewable energy projects. I led the effort to make tribal governments eligible to make and receive elect, uh, elective payments for energy, property, and electricity produced from certain renewable resources. Um, this will incentivize tribal communities to pursue renewable energy projects. Uh, create a uh, high paying job, attract needed uh, large scale investments uh, and to restore tribal sovereignty. Uh, my bill, we'll talk about it. I won't go through it, but it's called Promoting Sustainable Energy Projects for Tribal Communities Act. And it would, it would allow tribal governments to receive uh, cash to an amount equal to the value of the credit they would otherwise be eligible for um, uh, for certain tax credits available to offset the cost of electricity generated using um, qualified electrical resources. Um, that's in the Build Back Better Act, and we have not abandoned it. Uh, I'm going to yield back to you and wait on, on questions. Thank you, Congresswoman Moore. I, I have to say, I'm just glad that you are on our side and your fierceness. Not everybody is willing on to take the complex issues, but you and Representative Young cer certainly understand the need for sovereignty and the exercise of it. I love the fact that you say that you're not sub-sovereign. I remind our governor and our state legislators all the time that we are not sub-sovereigns. We are sovereigns of our own tribal nations. And you are a fierce advocate of that. And the fact that you are taking on some of these more complex, you and uh, Congressman Moore are talking, you're taking on these complex issues regarding taxation parity and uh, so my question to you, Congressman, Congresswoman Moore, is, is how do we as Indian country continue to not only continue to have you advocate for us, but become your ally in terms of helping us get across the finish line? Well, you, you know, you guys have been absolutely fabulous. I mean, you have been there and I know, Don, you would agree with it. When we've called on you for direct action and to go and talk to our colleagues on both sides of the house, you guys have been there. The other thing, too, is that you formed relationships with people on both sides. Yeah, I mean, really loyal friends. And you know, as a Democrat, I definitely encourage bipartisanship. It's really hard to make waves when you only have one party on your side. And I mean, this is, a, you know, sovereignty is a nonpartisan issue. We have always been able to make this movement by continuing to be part bipartisan. And, you know, really, I, I think the thing to keep pushing, a lot of people resent sovereignty, but I think you have to continue to remind people, uh, they, they resent the notion of equity. So I think we need to stick with the word fairness. It's all about fairness. You know, it's not about treating somebody better or giving them something to which they're not entitled. You know, just recently, I really fought for a bill, you know, got Nancy Pelosi's attention, you know, and, and, and you know, 
It was about a, 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 a pipeline that had broken down between my district and northern Wisconsin, where all the Republicans live. And so because that oil gets pulled out of the ground and trucked, it gets taxed twice because that pipeline failed. And I mean, I've been working on this for months because it's about fairness. It's not about me caring about fossil fuels or, you know what I mean? Because I vote just about against everything that's related to fossil fuels. But it's not about that. It's about fairness. You know, why, why should they get taxed, double taxed? Uh, uh, because of that. And so fairness is what we have to continue to push. I would, I would, I would say, have that be part of your discourse. Absolutely. And I think you're exactly right, Congressman Moore, about the sort of the toxic environment we're all in, we're, we're all navigating and the division of our country and the need for a unifying one, because at the core of everything we do, we're human beings, right? We all represent the human race. And I, I sincerely appreciate that and I, I agree. And also I know that when you talk about parity, there is also parity from the political enjoyment of tribal nations and their trustee responsibilities. So I, I appreciate that recognition very much. Um, Representative Young, you have been such a fierce advocate in a long tenure of the House of Representatives as Congresswoman Moore talked about. And I'm so glad that she is able to forge relationships. She recognizes that navigation, I mean, that girl knows. She comes from Milwaukee. She knows how to navigate things and create relationships because she knows that it's how we get things done. So in terms of that, can you talk about your recent efforts about supporting tribal lands, natural resources, subsistent rights, or co-management? Well, you know, this is an issue that we up in Alaska may be a little different because we have different structure, but I believe that the, under our Native Land Claims Act, there are 44 million acres of land that the Natives got uh, for their social and economic well-being. And yet I find out the federal government and interest groups will try to stop that. And that's wrong. That goes against the intent of the law. Uh, I've been somewhat successful in, in making them avoid their, their approach. Uh, but we have to make sure we follow the law and back up the tribes when they're legally correct. And that's the situation I have them come to my office all the time. We work this out with their legal people, my legal people, whatever, and then we fight this battle against those that try to take away the intent of the law. It's not easy. I've got a lot of interest in the state because of the Statehood Act. Uh, some people say the state has the right. I say that the Native land claims took that right somewhat away. That's where I get in trouble. But because of the act itself, I believe in co-management. Why should the federal government manage uh, or anybody else manage native land? Uh, so it's going to be an ongoing battle and discussion. There's been a lot of progress made. Uh, we have problems, as you know, even in the lower 48, with some of the standards, I believe, that um, the reservations have that, that, very frankly, have not been beneficial to the people, primarily implicated by the federal government. And the sovereignty concept, this self-determination, we should really believe in it and not just pat people on the head and say, you got self-determination and then take it away from you. So I happen to think this is a, a government. I actually got a bill in now to make uh, Metlakatl, Alaska, a, a, the, the foreign port. And it's caused a lot of concern. But why not make one of the knitting groups a foreign port? And they're a different government instead of a Canadian side. So, I mean, a lot of things we have doing. And by the way, my biggest asset, I think, is I do listen, the doors open, uh, and and we try to work together as a group for the benefit of the indigenous people. Uh, and this is not a partisan issue. Like Gwen said, I just wish we'd remember one thing, and Gwen knows this, we're not governing now. Uh, we're fighting all the time. And and I know how to solve that when is, is you, 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 you give the leadership back to the chairman. Don't let it go to the speaker's office, regardless of who the speaker is. Let the chairman run it like it was when I was there for 22 years. And we can come together with one another and then bring a bill to the floor. It's not a Republican bill. It's not a Democrat bill. It is a bill to be solved problems together, introduced and work for. I used to get on the floor and really, really debate a bill when I had a Democratic chairman because it wasn't a Democrat bill. It was our bill. We got to start doing that. Otherwise, we can't get things done appropriately. I, it can be done. People got to wake up to it. 
And just, you know, it's easy to hate. It's easy to hate. It's hard to love sometimes. But love will get something done. Hate will not. Don't rule by revenge. Agreed. Thank you for those good, strong words and reminders, Congressman. Um, with that said, you know, it is a unifying endeavor and we the people means everybody and it requires everybody's engagement and everybody's part participation to move this country forward. And with that said, we, we certainly appreciate you sharing some space this afternoon and we're going to yield to each of you for our closing remarks. We'll start with our lovely Congresswoman Woman Moore. Just let me say how wonderful it has been uh, working with the National uh, Conference of, uh, of American Indians on no matter what it's been on. You guys are a wealth of information. You're organized. You're disciplined. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's, it's good to know you got somebody that has your back. It is really hard to advocate uh, for people when they won't advocate uh, for themselves. And, you know, I realized, like Don said, how difficult it is to navigate, you know, 574 recognized tribes and demand that you all speak with one voice. But I mean, if, any, if anybody has really done that, you guys have figured out how to narrow your interests and to bring them to us in some way that is, that, that's flammable, and, uh, and, 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 and ready for legislation. We really appreciate that. that you, know, um, you know, part of what we're criticized for as Democrats or Republicans is airing our dirty laundry uh, instead of having those discussions internally and then coming out with some sort of resolve. And when you guys come out with some sort of resolve, there is no fighting back. I remember when we were doing the Violence Against Women Act, in 2013, and and the good white folk got very upset about the notion of tribes being able to uh, arrest a white man and uh, who had raped a native woman. And several people tried to say, well, why don't you just, you know, why don't you just drop these Native Americans and then the bill can just pass. And we said, no, we're not leaving any women behind, no. LGBTQ women, no, we're not leaving them behind. We're not leaving Native American women behind. We're not leaving immigrant women behind. We are, we, you know, we don't want any women subjected to violence while their foot's feet are on this soil, no matter where they are. That people should not be able to be dragged 10 feet onto tribal land and then nobody has any authority to stop people from beating and raping them. And so we held fast and this is a really good example of how we got all the groups, LGBTQ groups and domestic violence groups, nobody threw anybody under the bus. And that is what broke it for us. Indeed. That was the breakthrough. Indeed, in words to live by. And thank you for that fierce advocacy because it does matter. Um, with that said, uh, Congressman, your closing remarks? I can only echo you know, the words that were just spoken. Uh, I was really deeply involved in violence against the women. I was a sponsor of that legislation. Um, and we worked hard together and we got something done, I think, for the benefit of everybody. And uh, I'm going to continue to do that. I. I I would encourage one thing again, I want to keep back to this united bit. Uh, the congressmen and congresswomen should get most of their ideas from their constituents and fulfill your voices and your wishes. And that's why being united is so good. And you give me a united front, I can get, and Gwen and I can get most anything done. You get one side over here saying one thing, the other side saying the other thing. And then the other side says, well, they're, they're not in agreement. They, they destroy our battlefield. So all I can suggest to you, that you, we got good people in the Congress on both sides of the aisle, uh, happen to be very strongly in indigenous people, uh, and um, utilize this with honesty and a position of unity. Doing so, you'd be surprised what can be done. And I, uh, I appreciate what you had in this little chat today. Thank you, Gwen. I'll see you. By the way, it snows deep up here. I don't know whether you got Wisconsin snow or not, but we got a lot of snow. And uh, we'll be back to work uh, about a week from now. So God bless you all. And 
Thank you very much for having us on the show. And thank you, Congressman. And just as a reminder, I'm told that you did win an award, but today I also received a leadership award, so I share it with you because your fierce advocacy is so appreciated and we appreciate you spending time and we appreciate your continued advocacy and being a partner in this thing we call life. So thank you so much. Be well and be safe. And we'll talk to you all very soon. Okay. God bless. Take care. care. Thank you.